Good girl. Frog. G. G. Gull. Gull. Baby. Baby. Huh. Huh. Horse. A horse. Nay. <laughs> Nay. E. E. Iguana. Iguana. So I've just started editing this video and realised I have far too much to talk about apparently. So it goes on for far too long. Um, so basically I've decided to half the video, I'll do it in two parts, I'll do one part this week and one part next week. So this week I will talk about the issues I had when Elizabeth was born, so like first time mum issues, more tea than issues, pardon the pun. And then next week will be all the issues I had with Penelope, which were much more painful issues. I also wanted to say I've got nothing against formula feeding, it's just not what I wanted to do. Um, I've got friends that formula feed, I've got friends that tried breastfeeding and then went on to formula. And it's, it's absolutely whatever works for you as a mother, you need to do. first issue that I came across was practically from first minute, hour, whatever of her being born. She did not feed from me for the first three days. I feel like this is a huge one because I'm quite lucky. I have my mum who is a coordinator for a local breastfeeding volunteer support programme. Um, so I'm not naive to the fact that I do have some very positive reinforcement out there. But I think it would be quite fair to say that if your baby wasn't to feed from you, three days you would I would if I didn't know any better probably have just given up the way that I overcame that one was I hand expressed before she was born so the last three weeks I was pregnant from 37 weeks onwards it's recommended um, I hand expressed into syringes I had about maybe 10 syringes and they were only about between one to two mil so the tiny tiny little syringes and it literally they fill up with droplets worth of milk but when your baby is first born their stomach is tiny that one or two mil is all they need to fill themselves back up so for that first hurdle the key was to pre-plan because i was well aware that i wanted to breastfeed i had to make sure that i had backup i had supplies i had something to fall back on if i needed it and luckily i had it because i did need it you have to make sure that you keep frequently attaching baby to the breast just to stimulate that milk supply um, otherwise you you could struggle to have a good milk supply when it comes in after a couple of days but i remember after i think it was the fourth day that i woke up and she'd by this point she'd managed sort of a couple of feeds but considering this was like day it was day three and i remember waking up and i just burst out crying um, so i was on my own um, first time mum, my baby wasn't feeding from me and I woke up that morning and we'd used the last syringe in the middle of the night. I thought I wasn't going to be able to do it and it was, that was the first day that I ever pressed my midwife buzzer um, for some help because my, my emotions were all over the place. So just before we left the hospital, um, it was probably when engorgement hit. Wow, you've never seen boobs like it. I think, because I'd had blood transfusions, I think that my supply rocketed because of that supply of blood straight into my body. I don't know why, it's just, I've never seen anything like it. And I don't remember having an engorgement like it with Penelope. So I honestly think those blood transfusions, like, I can't even, like... As funny as that is now, it was really painful and I couldn't get comfortable in bed, like no position, like it's laying on your back, they're far too heavy, laying on your side, you're leaning on one, you shouldn't lay on your front when you're breastfeeding anyway, um, but there was no chance I would have been able to. So ways to kind of get over engorgement is to use hot and cold compresses, just whatever makes you kind of feel comfortable. To help regulate your supply, you can express, um, but only express enough to the point where they're comfortable again, because if you carry on to express, the next day it's just gonna happen again because your body's gonna think it needs to create that much milk. Um, you can hand express, so sometimes the engorgement around the breast isn't so much an issue, but the engorgement around the nipple is because when you then go to feed your baby, if your breast is so full, which is then making your nipple flat, it's very hard to get that big open mouth to get a good latch. And a lot of babies at newborn age will sort of struggle to keep up with how quickly an engorged breast will release the milk because it kind of, because it's so full, that pressure when it starts to release the milk, it flies like it. Obviously a tiny little newborn baby mouth that's just learning how to feed and they're used to like drops at a time, suddenly it's getting this massive 
I don't know why I'm doing that. It doesn't like shower them. Well, it does. It does sometimes shower them, to be fair. It can kind of make them choke a little bit when, when suddenly they're getting a lot of milk. So if you sometimes express a bit of that engorgement away um, just before you then feed baby, it doesn't quite overwhelm them when that fast milk supply comes their way. But if you've got a bit of a delayed letdown, there can be like a second spray of milk, like a fast, a fast spray of milk. So just be aware of that. So when we got home, we had a couple of issues with shallow lactation stuff. So I had a bit of soreness, but with Elizabeth, that was all pretty straightforward. It did get quite sore, but not to a point where I was going to give up. So the next thing that I struggled with is quite a basic one. I just struggled with the fact that I didn't enjoy it. Um, I knew it's what I wanted to do and I was going to continue doing it, but I didn't expect to not enjoy the feeling of it. Um, I think it's different for everyone. Some people really enjoy it. Some people really hate it. I didn't hate it to the point where it like made my skin crawl because some, for some people that is how they feel. But my determination to breastfeed kind of overruled that negative feeling I had towards that. There she is. There's my big girl. <sighs> Another hurdle to overcome as a first time mum was to find breastfeeding friendly clothes. I'm quite a shy person so finding clothes that helped me stay quite private was quite important to me. I was always worried about people making comments and looking and judging and, and whatever which can I say doesn't happen as often as social media might lead you to believe it happens. <laughs> In the year and a half combined <laughs> Half combined that I've breastfed, um, no one has. <laughs> no one has ever made a comment to me. <laughs> I found outfits that were best. I wore a lot of button-down shirts. I wore a lot of button down shirts, I wore a lot of vest tops that clipped from here, so like maternity vest tops. You can buy things like wraps, breastfeeding wraps, so you can wear whatever you want with me. <laughs> so you can wear whatever you want underneath and then you pop the wrap over the top when you're feeding. One thing I like to do is wear a top underneath and then a baggy cardigan, so that way so that way I can lift up the top and the cardigan just kind of acts as a shield. But obviously if you do feel comfortable and you don't feel the need to kind of cover up, I just did it because I'm quite a private person. In the UK it's protected by law so you can feed wherever you need to feed and no one can move you along. But if you're quite outgoing, if you don't care, just go for it. Just feed however you want to feed, wherever you want to feed. So that is this video. I've realised I had far less issues with Penelope but they were much worse issues. So uh, I think all I cover in the next video is mastitis, um, cracked nipples and a bad latch. So um, I'll maybe go into a bit more detail about what a good latch should look like, um, but we'll see. Hope you enjoyed and please like or subscribe if you did.